Okay, so you can now build 3D objects in Onshape. Congratulations! It would be nice to get those objects out of Onshape and into the real world. And 3D printing is the way that we're going to do that. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind when you're designing for a print, if you want to simplify this process and not have to do a bunch of conversions later, is when you create your drawing, you should go in and change your workspace units as the very first thing. Um, because by default, I believe they come in in inches. And we want to be working in millimeters uh, for 3D printers because everything in the 3D printing software is in millimeters. If you don't do that, if you do design in inches, that's fine. Uh, but you have to scale the final project um, up or down depending on what you're trying to do. So keep that in mind. If you design in millimeters for the 3D printer, life is going to be a little bit easier. Anyway, if you want to 3D print this part and it's the only part you have, it's really easy. Right click, export. If you have multiple parts and they're all supposed to be one object, make sure that you use the boolean tool first and use union to join those together into one part before you export otherwise there'll be multiple parts and you'll have to print them as separate objects which could be great because maybe you're going to assemble those separate objects after um, but for just printing one thing all you need to do right click and export give it a name Make sure the format says STL, which it does by default anyway. Um, the binary format is fine. You should have already set everything to millimeters. Just ch um, check and verify that that says millimeters, not inches. If it does say inches, get ready to do a conversion when you get it to the 3D printing software. Resolution of fine is good, and we're trying to download it, so perfect. You would hit OK. I'm not going to because I've already got it downloaded. And I've already got this shape downloaded, a slightly more um, complex shape to show you a few more features in the 3D print software. So now that you've got them downloaded, and they're sitting here in your downloads, how do you get them into the software? What is the software? The software is called Cura. The way you're going to open it is just click in your search bar, type Cura, and you can see it's already there, ready to go. Just click it or press enter and you got it. Um, I've also already got that running and ready to go. All you need to do to bring your models in, drag them in. Now watch what's about to happen. That's my model. This circle is the round print bed on my printer. This thing was never designed to be printed. It's way too big. So we have to scale it down. Click on it. And you've got some scale options right here. Now this particular printer has a print bed that is 300 millimeters in the X, 300 millimeters in the Y, and 330 millimeters in the Z direction, straight up. Um, so we are well beyond those limits. Let's shrink this down to something that fits inside. So I'm going to say, oh, how about 100? And now our part disappeared. We do have a shadow, though. The part is still here somewhere. We just can't see it. If that happens, Click over here. Oh, and notice all these other numbers changed. Uniform scaling is turned on, so dropping that to 100 dropped everything down to 5.5% of the original size. Anyway, let's go make that object visible again. What's happened is it's shrunk, and when it did, it collapsed on its origin, which was way up above the print bed. So it's way up here somewhere off screen, and we can't see it. So I'm just going to click on this move icon here. And it tells me where it currently is. It's at X200, Y0, with a Z of 980. So it's you know, 980 millimeters above the print bed. Let's set that to zero so it's on the print bed. And we could also set this to zero to center it. We could also, at this point, now that we can see it, drag it around. Notice here it's just a bright yellow. If we go this way, it becomes striped. That means some part of it is sticking out beyond the edge of the print bed, and that's not something you're going to be able to print. So that's your visual cue that you got to move your object around. Also, notice the red. Anything red is going to 
um, be overhung too much and not be able to be supported by the printer. So it's going to lay plastic down all the way up here. It's going to be laying more hot melted plastic. And when it gets here, this overhang is so much that that plastic is just going to fall to the ground. It's not going to stick to what's right here beside it. Um, you know, gravity. Um, so how do we deal with that? Well, let me show you. Click slice. Okay, I probably should have changed some settings first. That's taken a while. All right. The way that is set up right now, you can see that this print is going to take 8 hours and 47 minutes. That's painful. Um, all right. Where are the settings? I just barely updated uh, my version of Cura before recording this. That's probably not the best idea. Um, okay, so if you click on this bar, it will drop down and show you the settings. Uh, one thing we're going to do to speed this up and to support these overhung areas so that they can actually print is I'm going to increase the size of each layer. The smaller the layer, the more accurate the print and the smoother the final results. However, if each layer is only 0.1 millimeters, it's going to take a while to build all of this. Let's make each layer 0.4 millimeters. Uh, we'll talk about infill in a bit, but I want to look at support. And let's go ahead and reslice that. Now we went from 0.1 to 0.4, so we should expect it to get considerably faster, but I also added support that's extra plastic it's going to add in here to hold this up so that's going to make it take longer so we did one thing to make it faster and one thing to make it longer and our end result is this will print in three hours and ten minutes let's go ahead and preview this and in the preview you can see what the support material is going to look like it's going to build this plastic tower right here that's supposed to be easy to break and it's going to put it right underneath and touching the model and then when you're done printing this you have to break off that support and clean up the edges where the support touched so that's something to keep in mind when you're building your model you want to arrange it in such a way that you have as little support as possible and or support that you can easily get to. Now some of this support is inside that pipe. Um, now I would be able to get in there and break that off because I could come in through the bottom and just grab this tower and give it a twist and it should break off at the top. But I'm not going to really be able to get in there and clean up that edge. So if that was supposed to be a nice smooth surface, that's probably not going to happen. Um, also, Keep an eye on holes, um, well, circles that are not laying flat. Um, because if it's a circle that is standing up like this, it's going to be filled with support material. Um, and it's also generally not going to be perfectly round. You'll get more dimensionally accurate holes if your holes are facing down toward the print bed rather than trying to stand up and print the holes. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, where are the holes located on your part? How are they oriented? And what do you need to change to possibly get the best, uh, the best print out of it? So that's what this one would look like with all kinds of extra support material. Let's go take a look at the other one. So I'm not going to save this. In fact, I'm going to get out of preview. Uh oh, where'd they move that button? Um, oh, this is kind of interesting. If you've never seen a, a uh, printer working, this will play it layer by layer, or at least it would in the old version. Maybe my graphics card's having a hard time keeping up because I'm noticing everything is gray now and nothing is moving. That should have shown us layer by layer as it built this. Anyway, got my object selected and I'm going to delete it. Okay, no layers to show, so we're out of the preview. Let's load the other one. 
And it too was never designed to be 3D printed. It is also way too big. So we're just going to click on it. I'm going to go ahead and set it at 000, zero right now and scale it. So we're over 3,000 millimeters tall on a printer that can only handle 330 millimeters. So let's go ahead and shrink this down. And okay, so resetting his location first didn't really help. Let's do that again. And there's our part. And I am still in preview. Oh, there it is. Prepare. Okay. As you can see, looking at this object, see where the red is? That's going to all require support material. Well, you know what? This is not a very complex object. If we just rotated this a little bit, we could get away with no support material. This would be a much better print. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click the rotate icon over here. That gives me some handles. And you can just click these colored circles and drag it around. So I'm just going to drag until that says 90 and then let it go. It'll drop right to the bed, nice and flat. And now there is no support material. And again, we could set this up, layer thickness, infill, support, adhesion, and we'll talk about all those this time. So we've already talked about layer thickness. Infill is how much plastic is inside this shell because you can print it almost solid, like it 100%, it fills the inside of this with plastic material. That takes forever. 3D printers were never designed to make solid objects. Um, that's for injection molding. 3D printers do really good at creating outlines that have supports on the inside. And so you can control how dense those supports are with your infill slider here. The more support you add, the stronger the piece, but at the same time, the slower it is to, um, to print and the higher the chance that it's going to warp as it's printing because you got a lot more plastic that's going to be cooling off over time and if plastic cools at different rates on different parts of your model those parts are going to shrink while other hot parts don't and that creates warping so it's all something you have to consider when you're looking at these settings gradual infill provides a faster print because down here at the bottom there won't be much infill plastic but as it gets towards the top when it needs to hold up these upper surfaces it will start to add more and more um, so gradual infill can be a way to get a nice top surface if that's been giving you a problem with some prints uh, but at the same time not having a whole lot of plastic inside because a lot of these prints are designed for um, visual aids there, there's something you look at, there's something you demonstrate with, but they're not supposed to be working parts. Uh, if it is going to be a working part, you definitely don't want gradual infill, and you want to crank up your infill to whatever you need to make the part do what it's supposed to do, um, and then try not to go too far beyond that. Uh, support we already talked about. Adhesion we have not. So what adhesion is is it's extra plastic laid down around and or under your print in order to give that print something else to stick to on this print bed because what you don't want is for this plastic to start cooling and then to detach from the print surface and start moving around because that's it you're done your, your print has just failed you're making a mess there's plastic oozing out all over the place just doesn't work um, and also warping is a thing so if this starts to cool on this side uh, but not as much over here for some reason maybe there's a cold draft in the room um, this may shrink if it's not really well stuck to the bed and that shrinking could cause it to detach from the bed and then this side's gonna start to lift up and your whole print's gonna become uneven and your final part will be useless unless it's cosmetic only so adhesion is generally a good thing um, unless you're printing a really small quick object the larger the object the more likely it is that you're gonna need adhesion 
You can go into custom settings, but that's more than we need to know right now. So for this, I'm just going to hit slice. And this is a simpler object than the last one. And you can see it's going to take an hour and 21 minutes. And if we go into preview mode here, there is our object. You can see each individual layer. That's one layer of plastic. And if our preview wants to work this time, since it's a simpler object, let's see. Okay, I didn't want to go that far. There we go, that'll work. Let's see if we can see it build it layer by layer. There we go. Huh, I wonder why it's way up there. That's kind of weird. You can sort of see a digital print head here. Yeah, I'm not really sure why it doesn't want to come all the way down. But that's okay. You can see how the printer is going to be moving and laying down that strip of plastic all the way across the top. Do 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 around the outer profile. And then it will come in and start doing the inside too. Uh, I'm not going to keep watching that preview because that's taking way too long. The actual printer does move faster than that so prints are slow but when you watch the printer move that print head is really just flying along all right so this part would take one hour and 20 minute to print if i was trying to print this out in one class period um, i would probably come in and shrink this if it was just a matter of hey look what i made this is neat oh actually check this out see this preview see this extra edge around here that is the adhesion. So that's called a skirt sitting around the edge of that. Um, anyway, so if I was in a class and the whole idea was just to print this out so that I could show that I had printed out, all right, stop doing that, um, then I'd want to shrink it just so I could get it quicker. So I'll get back into prepare, click my object, go to scale, and let's just make this even smaller. So it used to be 100, let's make it 50. Everything else stays the same. You have to re-slice after a change like that. New print time, 18 minutes. That would come out super quick. Um, and so then all you would have to do is save to disk. And it's going to get a new file extension. It's going to be a G-code file at the end of this. So name it, put it where you can find it, save it. And the next step is to put that on an SD card and then walk that SD card over to the printer, pop it into the slot, choose your file, and hit go, and it will start printing for you. Uh, but that is a topic for another video. So that's it for this one. Anything you want to print, you can export as an STL, and then load it into Cura, and send it.